Mm -mm. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think we're live. Are we live? Can the people hear me at home? I need some help here. Is the is the stream here? Hello? People in the chat? Yes? Okay. Let's see if we can see me. Alright. Here we go. Look at this. I think we're live, guys. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. I would like to know in the chat if I am live because there's like a it's like a 30 second delay. And I live in Kentucky. We can hear you. Yes. That's what I want to hear. Uh, what's up, guys? Welcome back to um, to this channel that has, you know, hit a milestone, and that's kind of why we're celebrating today, and, and this is all about you. You know, this is a, a, a super chat slash chat slash I'm going to answer some Patreon questions video, so we're going to answer as many as we possibly can today. Don't really know how long we're going. Maybe 30, maybe an hour. I tend to talk a lot longer than I normally do, um, but I'm excited today, man. This is the first time that I've done a live stream in so long. Uh, I love doing this, man. I just love getting to questions and talking about movies. And it doesn't just have to be movies today. We can talk life. We can talk what I do, you know, on a daily basis. It's not much. It <laughs> normally involves uh, just watching Netflix and, and, and TV and movies and uh, just seeing all of the stuff in the chat. Once again, I am like 30 seconds behind, so I'll be acknowledging things that, that feel may feel like they're in the past. And I need you guys to let me know, too, if the stream lags... Well, I don't know what we're gonna do about it. But we're we're gonna we're gonna try our best to get through this today, man. And and I appreciate you guys uh, appreciate or, or thanking me. Or you don't need to thank me. I need to thank you. But just acknowledging the fact that we did hit 50k, which is um, it's just a number. And this is what I said in my Twitter post. This is what I said in my Facebook post. At the end of the day, it doesn't mean a lot because of the statistics. It means a lot because I have you all here watching my videos on a daily basis, man. And I just, I love talking about movies. That's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. But I promised you uh, that today I'm going to answer some of your all's questions. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, and as always, if you guys enjoy this video, if you like these live streams, if you hit that thumbs up button, we will definitely do more. I would like to start doing these on a weekly basis, maybe every Sunday. Once football's over, I'll have more time because I like watching football on Sundays. Uh, but I do want to pause real quick, and that's what we're going to do throughout this video is we're going to pause. We're going to acknowledge any super chats uh, that we get and let me find my little graphic here. Yeah, so Super Chat questions, Patreon questions, uh, those will be the focus in today's video. But I'm going to try to get to the chat as well and answer a lot of questions. But we do have a, uh, a question or a Super Chat from my boy Ryan O'Toole. And first off, if you don't know who Ryan O'Toole is, the guy's got a wonderful YouTube channel. Please check him out. He is fantastic. But Ryan O'Toole says, super proud of you, my friend. Thank you, man. I you're awesome. I love collaborating with you on your channel. Uh, have you ever thought about doing a Blu-ray collection video? It's a good question. You know, I get questions all the time. Do you collect uh, Blu-rays? Do you collect DVDs, VHSs? And I, I used to collect DVDs like a crazy person. And I do have quite a few Blu-rays. I don't know if I have enough to do a Blu-ray collection video, mostly because uh, my wife and I are very money conscious, which, is, you know, it's kind of true, but... I normally do, uh, if I don't love, love, love a movie, I don't buy it on Blu-ray, right? I have to love everything about it and just uh, respond to it in such a way like, you know, your end games, your 1917s, Uncut Gems, when those come out on, on Blu-ray, you, you bet your bottom I'm going to get those, right? But if it's if I'm giving it a 7 or an 8, I don't know if I'm going to buy it on Blu-ray. But that is a good idea. I actually had an idea recently, too, and let me know in the chat if you guys would like to see something like this, is... So I have my DVD collection from when I was uh, growing up as a kid, and my, my mom still has just buckets of DVDs in her garage. And I told her the other day, I'm like, what if I did like a, an old-fashioned DVD collection video going through all of the things I grew up with? I'm talking weird movies like The Cat in the Hat. So, so I think that would be a super fun video, uh, but it was a great question by Ryan O'Toole. I'm going to take a look into the chat really quick and just see what's going on down there. Uh, do you do any gaming? Occasionally. I'm a big Super Smash Bros. guy. I don't, um, I haven't actually purchased a gaming system in quite a while because, one, I play my brothers, and, and uh, two, I just, I watch too many movies, so I don't have a ton of time, uh, but it's a great question, and I'm getting a lot of Morbius things in the chat, man. I, I saw the picture, didn't do a video on it, but man, 
Morbius looks really, really cool. So I cannot wait to do something with that. I do want to go over real quick because I, uh, I asked Patreon to ask me a couple of questions. So I want to go over there and answer a few that they asked because they asked some pretty go good ones. By the way, if you're just tuning in, uh, I do want to acknowledge the fact that we are here because we hit 50K on this channel, which is all because of you. I... I did nothing but sit here and talk movies. You all are the support. You all are the reason that we're here. Uh, so I want to do this for you, and I want to keep doing my channel because of you all. Uh, it truly means a lot to me. I started tearing up the other day because I was just like, I freaking love so many people. And it's gotten to the point to where I, I literally start recognizing names uh, in my comments section, which is awesome. And, and the more comments you all leave the more I feel like we're, you know, becoming closer, and, and that's what I want to do. I want to become really close to my subscribers, so I truly appreciate that, but let's answer some of these questions. We're going to get through a couple of these before I go back to the chat, but we got some good ones here. Uh, we'll start off with Aaron J's question. This is over on Patreon, by the way, so Aaron asks, what movie have you rewatched more than any other movie? Well, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> this is a weird answer. This is probably not first place, but I watch Elf like twice every year for Christmas. So I've, at this point, I've probably rewatched that just as many times as any other movie, but it's The Dark Knight, man. I, The Dark Knight is, and we'll talk about it eventually, it is the pinnacle of superhero movies for me. And obviously, I'm just a massive superhero fan. So The Dark Knight is probably the movie I've watched more than any other. But I really like this second question here, too. Uh, what movie inspires you the most? And I have talked about it before, but uh, No Country for Old Men is the first film that I watched. And honestly, it just it got me excited about the fact that I could talk about movies, not just um, in, into the camera, but to other people, and it is part of the reason why I, I started studying what I studied in college, and that is uh, going into broadcasting, going into filmmaking. The whole reason I did that is because, not just because of No Country for Old Men, but these films, you know, 2006, 2007, 2008, man, just watching, responding, uh, uh, There Will Be Blood is another one, both came out in the same year. 2007, obviously, what I was 12, 13 years old, but I rewatched them a couple of years later, and I'm like, oh, man, I want to do this. I want to talk about movies, or I want to make movies when I get older. Um, so No Country for Old Men is the answer to that question, but we do have some super chats really quick, which I also want to put on screen just so you guys are able to see them. So, uh, Movie Man, what software do you use to make your videos? Well, I use a, a bit of Adobe Premiere. I use Final Cut for the most part to edit. And then uh, for this live stream package, I use Wirecast, which is really, really cool, man. Wirecast is a great platform, and I do want to thank Wirecast for, for setting me up with the software earlier on in the year, and they're the entire reason I'm able to do this live stream right now. So it's really cool, man, if you guys ever get a chance. But another one, a free, actually, this is a free software if you guys want to live stream on YouTube one of these days. It's called OBS. OBS, it's a free software, and I encourage you. Anybody can get it, and anybody can use it. If you guys ever want to live stream, there you go. So Wiley Todd, hey Austin, a uh, big fan, uh, and met up with your friend Aaron. Awesome, we made some videos together. Anyway, saw 1917 two times already. Very cool, uh, and want to see it again. And anyways, we can talk 1917. Score, please, incredible. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, let me tell you, the night, the score for 1917 is easily one of my favorite scores of the year. Now, it's up there, and I mentioned this in my, uh, I believe it was my Oscar video, the Golden Globe score, or, no, it was my Golden Globe video, but the, uh, the Joker score, sorry, and the 1917 score, my two favorite scores of the year. Now, to decide which score is better, that's going to take a lot. And I, I, I need to have an answer for tomorrow, uh, but man, it is, it is just a, a wonderful score for a wonderful film. So yeah, that's a, that's a great call. Hey, by the way, I do want to point out, Sean Chandler Talks About is in the chat room. Very cool, man. And thank you for, for thanking me on social media. Sean is an incredible YouTuber, I'm sure. I'm sure y'all know who he is. Like, I don't have to say who Sean Chandler is, but uh, he does great work on his channel, man, so definitely go check him out. But OBS is what he used to live stream as well. And OBS is a, I mean, for a free platform, how often do you get something as, what seems to be complicated like OBS, but it works very well, and I've never really had a major issue with it. I do want to go back to the Super Chat really quick, uh, because we got one. Have you seen the trailer to The Way Back? You know what? I don't 
I don't think I have. I don't think I have. So that's something I need to write down. Uh, I, I have these super chats. I think they save after I post this video. So I'll definitely get to that because that sounds... I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just not thinking right now, but I, I may have missed that one. Uh, Rob Valk. Oh, recognize that name. Uh, congrats on 50K, Austin. Been following your videos for a while now. Uh, just haven't been very active lately. That's okay. Listen, life gets in the way, right? This is... Uh, YouTube is a, is, a, is a tough place to stay consistent on, whether it's videos or, or the same people coming back to every video. One, because I post like a crazy person, and two, uh, because there's just, there's so much to get to, man. So that's okay. Uh, don't worry about it. I, I just appreciate your support and everything that you do. Uh, we're going to go back from this to the normal chat. Uh, I want to talk just some of these questions you guys are asking. So, uh, I think Honey Boy was underrated last year. Absolutely, Honey Boy was a fantastic movie in my top 25 movies of the year. But we're talking one of the better years I've seen for independent lower budget movies. So, Honey Boy, even though it wasn't in my top 10, it's definitely worth a watch for everyone. Uh, what is the next movie you're going to watch and review? Well, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I get to see Doolittle on Tuesday. There was a screening in Cincinnati. I live in Kentucky, uh, so I'm close to Cincinnati. We rarely get movie screenings, <laughs> so uh, that is one of the reasons why I am always either last or second to last. Now, uh, throughout December, I did get a tad bit lucky a couple of times. There were a few in Nashville that I got to go to, and some people hooked me up. They're like, hey, man, there's a screening in Louisville, but nobody knows about it. Go check it out. It's not on any of the websites. So I did get a tad bit lucky for a couple of those. But, man, it is it is so hard to actually get into a movie screening when you live in Lexington, Kentucky. And really, Nashville, four hours from me, is the closest place that we normally get screenings. But I think there's a Doolittle screening uh, in Cincinnati. So I may actually get a chance to go to that, which would be super cool. I uh, want to make sure I didn't miss any of these super chats here. So we do have one. Uh, oh, I'm going to butcher your name. Uh, Alexander. Alexander? Is that right? Uh, Eid? Eid? I'm so sorry. Uh, do you watch film noir movies? Yes, absolutely I do. Uh, man, it's been a while, though, since we've gotten a really good one. The um, Motherless Brooklyn kind of felt like a film noir but it's been a couple of years since we've had one that's really stuck with me towards the end of the year. But that's a great question. It's, it's a genre that's not tackled as often uh, as it used to be, which is a bit disappointing. But uh, Marley also asked in the Super Chat, congrats, Austin, on 50K. Marley, by the way, I recognize this name from a mile away. Very supportive. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, just always commenting. So, so deserving. Uh, I'm so excited for the Oscar noms release tomorrow morning, which I will be doing a video on, by the way. I still think it's criminal that Florence Pugh is barely getting any love. Midsommar was held on her back. Absolutely, Marley. My goodness, it is, uh, oh, I, I did notice something in the chat just now. Uh, it is uh, a shame. Last year, Tony Collette, this year, Florence Pugh. I do think Florence Pugh gets in for Best Supporting Actress. This is for uh, Little Women. But for Midsommar, she ain't going to get in. It's just kind of no push, nothing really for her in that film right now. But I do think that helps her get in for Little Women. So that And, and Sean pointed out, thank you, Sean, uh, just a lot like to deal with. But uh, The Way Back is the new Gavin O'Connor movie. I mentioned this in my most anticipated uh, movies of this year. But I am a massive fan of Gavin O'Connor. I think Gavin O'Connor is really, really talented as a filmmaker and super underrated, right? We have a movie like Warrior, which is one of my... It is my favorite movie of that year. Uh, and even recently, I believe he did The Accountant as well with Ben Affleck. Uh, and I really dug that movie. I know it didn't get a lot of hype on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't care. But I really dug that film. So, man, this one... It came close to getting like my top 15, top 10 most anticipated. And I did watch the trailer uh, now that I recognize the name. And sad Ben Affleck is good Ben Affleck. <laughs> I know if that sounds bad. Uh, but Ben Affleck, man, he's such, a, he's such a talented actor. So when he puts his heart and soul into it. So that's excited. Jeremy Johnson. Uh, hey, bud, tell your dad I can crush him in golf. <laughs> Jeremy Johnson. Family, man. We've got family in the chat room. Uh, just a, a, a great, wonderful, supportive. And that's the thing, and I say this all the time, is I have, uh, I have pastors. I have, uh, obviously, my mom and dad. Obviously, my cousins. Well, i got some cousins in the chat room right now, but 
just the support from the family and the friends and then you all, which I consider, uh, basically I consider friends is incredible. So uh, I truly appreciate everything that you all, <laughs> everything that you all do for me. But I do want to get back to the normal chat really quick before we get to the unboxing portion of this video, which is going to be interesting because we'll get to it here in just a second. Uh, man, a lot of questions here. Favorite James Bond? <sighs> yeah, Casino Royale. I think Casino Royale is the most all-around solid Bond film. I love Skyfall. Uh, obviously, I'm more of a, a modern Bond guy. And really, I'm not, um, I'm not huge on the James Bond franchise in general, which may upset and disappoint some people. Uh, but the modern James Bond, I do think, works very well. So I do want to go back to the chat room and just answer a few things. Uh, what's your thoughts on the new wave of, of American filmmakers? Damien Chazelle, yes. Barry Jenkins, yes. Robert Eggers, yes. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. I love those filmmakers. My modern filmmakers are really the ones that speak to me most just because this is the time that I'm growing up in. But I would even consider Scorsese still at this point. I just went through my letterbox stats and and I was able to check out, you know, what director did you watch the most last year? I watched Martin Scorsese more than any other director last year. And yes, I was catching up on all of his films that I had missed out on in preparation for The Irishman, but it's still really really cool. So uh so yeah, that's a that's an interesting stat to look at if you guys have Letterboxd, and I believe you have to be on the pro level to look at that kind of stuff, but I definitely encourage you all to check it out. Back to the chat room. Uh, what is your favorite Steven Spielberg movie? It is uh, Saving Private Ryan. It is one of my favorite war films of all time, and I think that is Spielberg at his... It's an unpopular opinion. I love a lot of his films, but that's absolutely my favorite. Uh, please answer. Flick Fan Awards 2020. You know, I, I don't know yet... I'm thinking about it. It's a lot of work, and I don't want to say for not a lot of payoff because you all who watched it last year were awesome. Um, <clears throat> it just didn't do as well as I wanted it to do, but uh, that was, you know, a while ago, and I had way less subscribers, so maybe it'll do better this year. I, I am considering it, though, and, and my wife and I, we may, we may get on that. We'll see. Uh, best movie of all time. Oh, that's a good question. That's a question that I want to answer. I don't know if I can do it yet. I may answer it by the end of the video, but it is a... Um, I think it's kind of obvious to you guys at this point what the best movie of all time is, but, you know, I, I want to save it for a video, but then again, it's kind of obvious. 3C Phil! <laughs> 3C, stop it! You stop that with the super chat, 3C. Oh, my boy, you didn't have to do that. Uh, Austin is my best friend. <laughs> Everyone else, stay away. Uh, LOL, but in all seriousness, very proud of you, man. When I first saw your channel, I knew, uh, I knew I wanted to work with you because of your insight and insane dedication. Keep rocking it, 3C. You don't... You're making me blush right now, 3C. Uh, this is a good time to point out something, though, that I actually uh, inserted an image for. 3C and I do a uh, podcast, a collab podcast, but we've also been doing spoiler reviews lately over on Film Strippers on YouTube. Uh, we have some really exciting things coming on uh, about that in the future, some announcements maybe. I don't want to give too many things away, but uh, let's just say Film Strippers on YouTube. Go check that out, man. It is so much fun. And I, I, I truly appreciate Chris for collabing with me on that. And we have a lot of fun over there. And like I said, spoiler reviews, rarely get to do them on my channel. Uh, but it's super entertaining when, when Chris and I do them. So let's go back really quick. I know I got a, some wonderful questions in the, in the chat. And, and 3C is just <laughs> cracking me up with the super chat. It was so funny. Uh, but I do want to respond to a few more of these Patreon questions because I promised him I'd try to get to them. So... All right, what's the last one I answered here? Uh, do you want to create movies yourself? Absolutely. I think pretty much everyone in what the industry that we're in, we either want to create a movie or we want to be a part of a film. Uh, I've always wanted to be a director. That's one of the things I went to school for. Now, I didn't graduate with a degree to be a director. I, I, I graduated with a, a broadcasting slash media degree with a minor in filmmaking. So I, I did a, a little bit of both. I kind of dabbled in what slowly became my YouTube channel. Uh, but I did want to be a director for a long, long time. I just realized it's hard to do that when you live in Kentucky, <laughs> unfortunately. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's your favorite meal? Oh, man, I, I love me a good steak. I like a I like a big old steak and some shrimp Alfredo. That's that's my two favorite things right there. So that that's wow. That sounded really Kentucky to me. That's my two favorite things right there. Uh, what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear is um, wow. This is a cliche answer, 
My biggest fear, honestly, guys, it's failure. I, I don't want to fail no matter what I'm doing, whether it's my, uh, my career in life with my wife. I want to, you know, make sure I can support my family to the degree that I think it's important. But uh, we support each other. It's a team. It's a team effort, of course. But yeah, failure is my biggest fear. Favorite director, modern director, I'm going to go that route right now as Denis Villeneuve. I think Denis Villeneuve is a phenomenal director. And just right now, all of his movies, man. Uh, hottest take on a movie you can think of. Oh, this is going to ruffle some feathers. I I hate The Mist. The modern Mist. It got good reviews and people enjoy it. I can't stand that movie. I'm going to move on because that's pretty controversial. We got one from Paul. What are your uh, f- top five all-time favorite movies? That's tough because I want to save that for a video or, or all-time favorite franchises. But I will respond to what you said. Uh, yours are, in no particular order, Star Wars, The Godfather, The Shining, Pulp Fiction, The Lion King, the original. I, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with those picks, Paul. Those are some great picks. Love all of those movies slash franchises, and uh, especially throwing in The Godfather and the original Lion King. Man, that is so awesome. So some some great choices there. Uh, Jip, thank you, Jip, a great patron. Uh, Patron of mine, uh, congratulations on 50K. Do you think you would be a good actor? I don't know, guys. I get this question all the time. I just don't know. I'm so awkward in real life. You know, I just, I don't know if it would translate to the big screen. But, hmm, maybe. If I put everything I could into it, maybe. I just feel like I'd, they'd be like, hey, man, you're, uh, <laughs> your accent is shining through. So, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, w- I did take a class in college, though, because my accent was so bad. I, they have a accent correction class in Kentucky, which is crazy enough. Uh, so, it did help me out a little bit, but every time I go back home or I see my parents, I'm like, hey, y'all. <laughs> so, it goes back to normal. Um, what is your biggest annoyance with movie theaters? Honestly. And this is not people within the movie theaters. This is biggest annoyance in movie theaters. That is, um, that is probably lack of good sound. I hate going into a theater and the the picture is wonderful, but the sound just doesn't measure up. Uh, so that's probably my biggest annoyance is when the sound just doesn't match up, man. Which is such a bummer, but uh, yeah, that's a great question, man, because there are so many things. I did get a super chat really quick, so I do want to go back over to what's going on in the chat room. Uh, this is from Ben. Thanks for making an effort to interact with your subs. No, you're welcome. This isn't something that I, I don't often do because I don't want to do. This is honestly, I, I, do, I come off as a, a bit awkward, like I said sometimes, and uh, live streams make me nervous. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, uh, I want to do this as often as I can. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. We're going to try eventually over on Film Strippers with 3C. I see 3C in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> I think him and Sean are going back and forth. It isn't telling what they're saying, but I like what they're doing right now. Uh, we're going to try to go live on our podcast eventually. So, And we would love to have guests, Sean. <clears throat> we would like to have you on eventually. So I, th- I think that would be super cool. Uh, and we did an update with Wirecast recently to where I think we can make that happen. A live, dual, in different locations podcast. So uh, no, no big deal. I love doing this. Oh, man, The Night Comes for Us versus Mile 22. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of, of Mile 22. I would say The Night Comes for Us. Uh, Mile 22 is one of those movies that I watched and, and, hey, hey, everybody, it's Mark Wahlberg. I just, I just wanted to really enjoy it. Uh, You know, he's not running away from Transformers. It's it's not a teddy bear, but it still looked really fun because anything with Mark Wahlberg is fun. Why am I doing this live? This is ridiculous. Um, I, I wanted that movie to be really good. I was so disappointed because I love the director and I love all of the actors behind it. I also see Ruby Tuesday in the chat. Uh, congratulations, Austin. You rock a, another wonderful channel on YouTube. He talks Netflix like I do, so definitely go check him out. Uh, let's go back to the chat super quick, though. I, I do want to acknowledge some of the questions. Better film, Marriage Story, or 1917? Better? Better film? It's close, but my favorite film out of the two is 1917, but they're both in my top five of the year, so I don't have kids. I have a dog. If I had multiple dogs, it would be hard to choose between which dog. This is how I feel about 1917 and Marriage Story. 
I can't choose. I love them both very much with all of my heart. So <laughs> that's my choice with that. Uh, <laughs> I forgot Mile 22 existed, as did I until just now. Have you seen Avengement? Ooh. If you like a brutal, bone-crushing, violent movie with Scott Atkins. I like Scott Atkins. No, I have not, but that's another one that I'm going to have to keep in mind. Uncut Gems or Good Time? It's a great question. Uncut Gems. Uh, ooh, I'm going to update y'all on something. I don't have a picture of this, so you may not believe me, but if you follow me on Letterboxd right now, I am keeping my 2019 list uh, updated constantly. And I had Uncut Gems at number two on the year. Now I have Uncut Gems at number three on the year because I moved another movie over. And I'm not going to say which one it is, but Uncut Gems is still my number three. I still love the film. I think it's fantastic. But I'm going to go Uncut Gems over Good Time, right? Good Time is a fantastic movie. It's fantastic, no doubt in my mind. But Uncut Gems, what it did, not just for Adam Sandler, but what it did for my adrenaline throughout the entire film, I just thought was amazing, man. Uh, so yeah, Uncut Gems over Good Time. Never thought I would say that about the, the Safdie Brothers follow-up, but the Safdie Brothers are, are such good directors. When is your top 100 movie list coming out? If you guys follow me on Letterboxd, you know I've been working on this for forever. It is one of the hardest, most difficult things I can possibly do. I do have a list of 30 together. I wanted to do it in January just because the month kind of calls for it because of the lack of other things, but I don't know yet. I don't know. Uh, hopefully this month, maybe February. I want to get it out within the next two months, my top movies of all time, but it changes every day, so it's very difficult. Favorite A24 movie. That's tough because I've not updated my list lately. Uh, with, the, the, with the latest movies that I've watched, obviously Uncut Gems is going to be up there. I'm a massive fan of The Florida Project. Uh, 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 Moonlight is a beautiful... F there are just so many. Ex Machina. Um, so I need to get on that list. But that's a great question because I love A24. We do a little A24 podcast on my Patreon page as well. Aaron and I, I don't know if he's still in the chat, but... But uh, Morpho Comics in the chat room. This is how I win Morpho Comics. I, you, what you do on YouTube is awesome, and your support for my channel is fantastic. I'm just making sure I don't have any other super chats that I missed. Ooh, ooh, what is your favorite studio? Do I say is it Ghibli or Ghibli? People, some people say Ghibli. Ghibli. Uh, that is Spirited Away. That is Spirited Away. I watched Spirited Away for the first time, and I, I almost cried. I almost cried. It is a monumental film. If we're talking top 50 movies of all time, that is on that list. I think Spirited Away is a beautiful movie that, that people talk about, yes, but not enough people. I think everyone needs to watch this movie. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful film. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, Ex Machina, a great choice for an A24 film. Oh, of course, Good Time. Yeah, that's up there. Obviously, I would put Uncut Gems over it, but yeah, Good Time. Uh, 1917, I will be seeing that. Uh, what was the Scott Atkins movie called again? Avengement, right? Am I right? Avengement? I'm trying to remember that so I can watch it eventually. Uh, favorite pilot series of 2019. Oh, that's tough. Oh, that's tough. Oh, uh, that's something I would have to think about. What are my top TV shows of the year? I'm trying to think of my le succession. Uh, Chernobyl, limited series. That's not coming back. Um, I really enjoyed The Witcher. I enjoyed Dark Crystal. I enjoyed a couple of them. You guys will have to, to think, but there were some really good pilot series in 2019. Watchmen, but that's probably not coming back. It's hard to distinguish a limited series in this. Uh, what 40s through 60s noir film movie is your favorite? Oh, gosh. That's... Uh, that's that's tough to answer on the spot. That is tough to answer on the spot. I would, I would honestly have to, I would have to put that together and answer. I'm sorry, I'm so, I know it's a super chat, I can't answer it right now, but that is such a good question. But let me keep that in mind. Stay tuned. And maybe during my next live stream, I will mark down all the super chats that I can't necessarily answer right now, and I'll answer those at the beginning of my next video. Because like I said, I want to do this more often. Most anticipated comic book movie in 2021. Oh, man. Well, it was uh, Doctor Strange 2021. I, regardless, I've since since we lost the director. That kind of worries me now, but it's probably Batman. You know, I've been doing all the Batman coverage on my channel. I just, I love, I love the character of Batman. It, it is my, probably my favorite superhero of all time, not necessarily on-screen superhero, so... Uh, Oh, here we go. Uh, I do want to respond to this. You never made a spoiler review to Rise of Skywalker, so what is your biggest issue with the movie now, now that it's out? Any thoughts on the sequel? Uh, on the sequel as a whole? You know, a lot of it comes down to just shoehorning things in to make fans happy. That's 
really, and it and it felt inconsistent in the movie. I we actually did a spoiler review on film strippers. So if you guys want to go to, I know I didn't market that as well as I should have. So if you guys want to go over to film strippers, uh, check that out. Also, it, my Wi-Fi says it's being laggy, so if anything's wrong with it, let me know in the chat. But if I sound good, sweet. Um, but yeah, it, Film Strippers, there is a Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker spoiler review if you want to go check that out, but it's a good question. Uh, most overrated movie of all time, The Mist. I already talked about that, in my opinion. A lot of people love that film. Do you think Miles Teller should have been nominated for an Oscar for Whiplash? I think everything should have been. I think the drum set should have been nominated for an Oscar for Whiplash. <laughs> I, I love Whiplash's favorite movies of the decade. Uh, it's in that video. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big fan of DC villains. Me too. Are you excited for Top Gun Maverick? I actually am. I I didn't include it in like my top 10 most anticipated for the year, but I'm actually I'm excited for it, man. Uh, more excited for Dune than Tenet. Yeah. Uh, why? Uh, well, Denis, it's so close. But Denis Villeneuve, what he has been able to do so far, and just the fact that this could be kind of, not the new Star Wars tone-wise and story-wise, but just the new Star Wars in general. Like, this could be the, the big new sci-fi fantasy film, right? Uh, and that, that could be the best movie of the year. I mean, Tenet could be the best movie of the year. It would not surprise me if Tenet ends up in my number one, but Denis Villeneuve blows me away every single time. But they're one and two. Easy, easy. Uh, let's see, we got some more. Um, uh... Jim Bubba, FPV, recognize. Uh, oh, brother, we're out there, Big Lebowski. Ugh. Well, I'm from Kentucky. I am a man of constant sorrow. And a lot, this is unpopular. I would probably go, oh, brother, where art thou? Just because it speaks to me more and my lineage. <laughs> it speaks to me more. But uh, gosh, two, two wonderful, wonderful films. That was a great super chat question. Uh, somebody in the chat, hey, sup? Hey, Seth, how you doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, Jiminator J, apparently the second season of Warriors on Cinemax is in the works. Mm. I personally love the first season. Have you seen it yet? If so, what did you think? No, but I've heard it's great. I've heard nonstop things about this show. And, and so this is my boost. This is what gets me to watch this show. I said before January, I am watching Fleabag. I promised you guys I would watch Fleabag in January. I'm trying to get through that. I'm trying to get through uh, The Clone Wars you know, all the catch-ups, uh, and, and Warriors on Cinemax, and I do have Cinemax uh, for uh, many different things on the platform, but I haven't watched Warriors yet, so that's a great... Who's your pick to win the Super Bowl? Uh, that's really funny, because last night I was watching the Ravens game, and, and I <laughs> I didn't tell anybody, but I kind of picked the Titans to beat the Ravens. My picks for the Super Bowl uh, originally were the Chiefs versus the Saints. Well, clearly that didn't work out. Now I have the Chiefs versus the 49ers. Uh, regardless, my Chiefs pick is looking pretty good right now. But uh, I just, I love, I love Drew Brees. I am a Steelers fan, so, you know. But Baltimore, take a seat. Take a seat right next to us on the couch, man. Come on. Come on. If you're a Baltimore fan, come on. It's funny. It's not funny to you. I know how you feel. Uh, favorite Lord of the Rings movie? Oh, man. It is Return of the King. That's cliche, I know, and a lot of people love the Two Towers, and I love the Two Towers, but Return of the King, it encapsulates, it embodies, it is the epic. When you nail a third movie in the trilogy, when you nail it, it speaks to my soul. Uh, so, Return of the King, but Lord of the Rings, we're talking favorite movies of all time. You might just see all three of those movies pop up on that list. I'm just saying. I love that franchise, and, and the woman who I married, uh, she is the world's biggest Lord of the Rings fan, so I can't tell you how many times I've watched those movies, and they're long, and I'm talking extended cut, okay? So, <laughs> uh, back to the chat real quick, and then I do want to go back to the super chat. Uh, we are approaching the 34-minute mark. That's not too bad. I'm looking pretty good. 49ers are losing the NFC Championship, calling it now. Ooh, Seahawks, Chiefs. You know, I can't deny that the Seahawks could easily beat the 49ers. They've done it once this year. They could do it again. That's a good call, man. And Seattle, they're a tough team. I know you guys don't want to talk football, but they're a tough team. Uh, the two towers, it's like, uh, we have Samuel Prater in the chat. You know, since we have Samuel Prater in the chat, let's do this, let's do this unboxing portion of the video. Since Samuel Prater is in the chat. So Samuel Prater, yeah, I'm not even going to describe who he is. I'm just going to, I'm going to play the video. If the audio doesn't work, I don't think I've ever played an actual video within a live stream before. So, so let me know if it sounded bad in the chat room. But here's the unboxing portion of this video. It's, <laughs> I love you, man. It's not what you think. All right, let, let's, let's get to it. 
Here we go. All right, guys, so we have arrived at the unboxing portion of this video where I am going to take this and open it. Clearly, I've never done one of these, but uh, this arrived from my buddy named Samuel Prater, who lives in Hawaii currently. Now, he will be moving back to Kentucky very soon, so he might pop up every now and then, but uh, he sent me this, man. He's been doing this, uh, and every gift is different, right? He sent me this giant Joker poster, but he's also sent me a few things just for fun, and I don't know which one this is, but he told me, Austin, open this during a live stream. So this is technically during a live stream, Sam. I worked my way around it, but we're still going to open it. I'm going to explore it. Maybe it's something comic book related, possibly something movie related. Regardless, I'm excited. Here we go. Just so you know, I am wearing my glasses because I can't normally see. So if I have to read something, they have to stay on. I'm not good at this. I'm, this is why I didn't do it live. Right here. Get past that little sliver. What would you send me, Sam? What would you send me, pal? Hopefully I don't break it. Oh. Oh, I think I have to... Man. So, um... <laughs> this is the, uh... World's Hottest Gummy Bear. 900 times hotter than a jalapeno pepper. 9 million Scoville. That is, um... <laughs> a Carolina Reaper is 2 million <laughs> And this one, 9 million! I'm going to die. So after calling my friend Sam and discussing what to do about this, because if I were to do it on a live stream today, I would die, and I, I don't want you to witness that in real time, he said, he gave me his blessing, that it would be fun to do a review while eating the world's hottest gummy bear. So I plan on, this Wednesday, reviewing my favorite movie of all time while eating the world's hottest gummy bear. Now... This is probably something that I will not continue on my channel, so it will most likely be a one-time thing, because I will suffer. But it will possibly be extremely entertaining, so I want you guys to tune into that, and let me know if that's something that interests you. I'm going to throw it back to me, but um, Samuel Prater, thanks for the gift, man. <laughs> well, <clears throat> so, Sam, my... My friend Sam. My friend Sam sent me this. Sent me this. Which I have since went and watched other videos on, and it looks extremely painful. But Sam likes to mess with me. But I look at this as a challenge, and I say, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to eat the world's hottest gummy bear. And if I explode on camera, I'm going to explode. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put up a... Oh. Oh, yeah, see, you made it to 50K before this happened. Yeah, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to put a, uh, I'm gonna put a uh, poll up on my community page, and I'm going to ask you guys what movie, if it, whether it's, you know, my favorite movie of all time, which I thought about, or if it's like a Joker or an Endgame, you know, a movie that people like talking about. I'm going to try my best to get through the review while eating this gummy bear. But I'm going to review the movie no matter what I'm doing. If I'm throwing up, I'm going to keep reviewing it. I know this is like some Rhett and Link stuff, but hey, hey, Sam, you challenge me, man. I have to accept this challenge, right? If I don't accept this challenge, I don't look good. And we hit 50K. What do we do on this channel? We eat the world's hottest gummy bear. And everybody in the chat is like, do it. Here we go. Let's go. So here's what we're... Get out of here, you little nitro. <laughs> here's what we're doing. So um, on... Uh, uh, Either this Wednesday or next Wednesday, I'm not for sure, because it's according to if I get that doodle screening. If I get the doodle screening, probably next Wednesday. But this Wednesday or next Wednesday, I'm going to put up a video of me eating the world's hottest gummy bear. So if you want to hit the notification bell on my channel just to know when that goes up, sure. If you don't, that's fine. If you don't want to watch me explode into flames, that's cool. But Sam has challenged me. And I cannot deny this challenge. Also, Sam is moving back soon. So you're going to see him pop up on this channel. But Sam... You. 
<laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, the <laughs> Bruce said, do the mist. <laughs> Since you hate the mist, that is so funny. But I do want to go back to the Super Chat really quick. Michael Jones Films. Um, by the way, well, I went to college with this guy, uh, an incredible filmmaker in himself. Um, <clears throat> he's a wonderful, wonderful cinematographer. I appreciate you, man. Congratulations, Austin. Proud of you. Keep working, brother. Uh, thank you, man, so much. That means a lot. And then, Ben, thanks for making an effort to interact with the subs. I said it before. I'll say it again. It is not an effort. This is joy, pure joy for me. I love doing this, man. You guys are truly, truly awesome. So I appreciate it. Let's get back to the questions. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Okay. Are you excited for The Boys Season 2? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Absolutely. The Boys Season 2 uh, is one of my most anticipated shows in general, I love The Boys Season 1. I thought it was great favorite John Wick film. Uh, the new one. I think it's the new John Wick film. You know, I love the first for the story. I love the second for the action. But I think the third John Wick film uh, is an amalgamation of both. The The common critique is that they're all similar, but I think the, the newest one is my favorite. But they're all close. I love them all. Can you do top 50 greatest, not favorite movies of all time? See, that's where we come to kind of just, uh, you know... I know it's your favorite, but it's not the greatest. And you're right. Even this year, I, you know, I probably wouldn't put Avengers Endgame up there in terms of the best movies of 2019, but it is one of my favorite movies of 2019. Obviously, you've got films like um, Your Uncut Gems, Your 1917, yes, but like A Marriage Story. Marriage Story is probably top three best made movies of the year, but it's number five for me in terms of favorites. So distinguishing those lists are very tough but if I title it favorite, it, it tends not to perform as well as best in the title. So I do. That's why I establish those at the beginning of my videos. But that's a great call, man. I, distinguishing best and favorite is a tough thing to do, but it is. Uh, did you like the mist? No, I did not. <laughs> what is your favorite Harrison For uh, Ford performance? It's got to be Indiana Jones. But let me tell you, I do, I do love me some Han Solo. So those two, that's it, going to be the favorite for everybody. Uh, but that's my favorite. So I, I have to be honest. Yet another film noir question. No, that's okay. Uh, but since September, I have been hooked on them. Have you seen The Lost Week in 1945? Some do not see it as a film noir. In my opinion, it's a masterpiece. The Lost Week? No. No, I have not. But let me tell you, this year, thank you for, for the question. This year, I am, I am intending on watching a lot of movies, not just from this year, but a lot of movies that I have never seen before that are considered classics or I have never seen before that people recommend to me. So I will absolutely put that on my watch list on Letterboxd. I will absolutely. I can't guarantee that I'll get to it within the next couple of weeks just because the schedule is a little bit lined up in terms of watching movies. That's right. I'm OCD. I make my schedule for when I watch movies. Sorry, I'm weird. Uh, but it's a great question. I, I have not seen that film. So there we go. There we go. I will uh, I will get that together, and I will hopefully watch it. And like I said, stay tuned to this channel, because you recommending film noirs to me is awesome, because I just feel like I haven't seen as many film noirs as I needed to see. But I love the film noir, noir questions, and I love the recommendations. See, that's why I love you guys, because you recommend things in the comments, in the chat, in, in the super chat, like all of these things. You recommend things for me, and because of you, I, I'm going to see you so I'm in the middle of a show like Fleabag. Because of you, because I had so many people tell me that I'm, uh, Austin, you need to watch Fleabag, and I'm three episodes in, and yes, it's very good. Uh, Sean Chandler in the chat, uh, uh, the games we must play with the titles and, and defining terms. I hate that I have uh, to use the word engine that's, uh, I'm actually posting my favorite, my favorite, wait, wait, You're, oh yes, you are. I saw your, uh, uh, I saw your community page post. So Sean Chandler, hey. It, when this video is over, go to Sean Chandler's page because he's posting his 20 favorite movies of all time. Man, I'm I'm curious. When I saw you post that on the uh, community page, I'm like, hmm, I wonder what Sean's favorite movies are because I just don't know. Like, I know your tendencies and what things you sort of like, so I have my guesses. Uh, but that's see, and I love seeing all of the people that I follow on YouTube and all of the friends on YouTube and whatnot. Um, I love seeing their favorites. What what drives them to love the movies that they love, and the different tastes, right? My taste is different than Sean's, which is different than 3C, which is different than Zach Pope, which is different than all of these guys, uh, Tyler Tompkins and, and, and Griffin and all of these guys. 
we all have different tastes, but at the end of the day, we all love movies. And I love what uh, I love seeing what makes different people go, right? And even a Jeremy Johns and a Chris Duckman and a, and a, and a Flick Pick, which which I've I've actually been able to talk to Flick Pick just a tad bit, uh, a little bit last year, which was really cool. Um, he's a nice guy, but the way that their mind minds work is really incredible. Even though sometimes I disagree with them. And let me tell you, I've disagreed a lot with, with like a Jeremy Johns and a Flick Pick and all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, I love watching their content because I just love seeing where they come from, even if I don't agree with everything. And, and it's really cool to just soak that in and be like, hey, we can all love different movies, but we all still love movies. I know I went on a tirade just now. Uh, I'm getting in all caps. Watch Steven Universe. My brother watches Steven Universe, and he loves Steven Universe. So... I probably should, and I was a big regular show, uh, Adventure Time guy for, for quite a while. I loved those two shows, so I probably should watch Steven Universe because I feel like it fits in that category of great Cartoon Network, modern Cartoon Network shows. Um, let's see, uh, Hooplehead, Hooplehead, is that right? Uh, USA, uh, thanks for all of your aw- awesome content. Now, thank you, one, for the super chat, and two, for acknowledging that, man. I, I appreciate that. I don't think all my content's awesome, but I think I, I put a lot of effort into it, and uh, my wife... She, I probably get on her last nerve because I'm in here every single day recording videos, uh, but that's okay. Uh, Samuel Prater, who sent me the package. I'm a true friend. Yeah, I'm sure you are, Sam. No, he, no, Sam is a true friend, but that uh, just cracks me up that I have to do that now. Uh, Austin, do a letterboxed follow spree. I did a little bit the other day when I posted on my community page, um, but I am going to, I'm going to follow more. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little shout out here in the next couple of days, like in a future video. But Letterboxd, guys, if you're not on Letterboxd, get on Letterboxd. It's a wonderful page. I'm so OCD when it comes to my movie watching. I, I log every movie, and even when I watch a random film, like the other day I watched Black Swan. I wrote a full review on it. The other day I watched uh, uh, Moneyball, wrote a full review on it. I love Letterboxd, and I don't do it because it's like, oh, I want this person to see how... I, I do it because I love it, and I, I actually used to do it on IMDb, and nobody even saw what I was doing. So now I get to do it, and people can follow along, and I can follow along with people, and it's just a really cool community over there, so definitely check it out. Are you a gamer? You know, not a gamer, but I do like playing uh, a, a video games, of course, you know. There are uh, so many games that I grew up with that I absolutely love. I'm a big Super Smash Bros. guy, like I said. I've always been, I'm a big Nintendo guy, man. Mario Kart, uh, uh, Mario Baseball, you know, NBA Street V3 with Mario. Let's go. Um, 1917 is GOAT. Yes, it is. I agree with that. Are you going to review the uh, Apple TV Plus series? You know, I kind of fell off after the first couple of episodes review, but I do need to get back on board. I've heard The Servant actually ended up getting really, really crazy. Uh, that was from Aaron. But man, I I, uh, I do need to get back into uh, get back into that because it's a streaming service that I just kind of forget about with Disney Plus, and you know maybe they need to step up their game in terms of marketing. But yeah, I definitely want to get back into them. I, my goal this year, also with the movie stuff, is to watch more TV shows. Even though I watched a lot last year, but I want to get more kind of caught up in things. Uh, and Sean just said he's trying to get he's trying to uh, get better at using Letterbox. I mean, Letterboxd is. It's an odd community at times because you never know re- which review is going to get the response that you think it's going to get. Sometimes it's the random one. Sometimes it's the bad movies. But, um, but for list purposes, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Sean, I- I've got all the way back to, I think, 1995. I've got my favorite movies uh, of all of those years. It's so cool, man. And, and, uh, and I, every movie I've ever seen is not logged because a lot of the films I feel like I need to watch again to get a better opinion. So you're going to be like, why are you not putting that movie on your on your letterbox? It's because I need to see it again, but it's still a really cool place for all of that stuff. Um, <laughs> Samuel Prater said, what are those toys over there? Well, I did get a couple for Christmas. I got some, uh, I got some pop figures. My uh, sister-in-law and her boyfriend got me 11. So here's 11. Uh, they got me... Uh, Already had Dwight. Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick right here. And I have the first order Jet Trooper. I'm just now getting into Pops. It's a new thing for me. Uh, 3C Films, I blame you. And, and 3C Films is actually the reason I have Colonel Sanders. He gave me uh, he gave me a Colonel Sanders when I went and visited him in Texas. So it was cool. It, it was a nice time. Let's go back to the chat real quick, and then I'll go over to Patreon for just a second. Um. Letterbox is interesting, says Ryan O'Toole, since I've changed my rating system, I wish they allowed you to use letter grades. So, 
actually, if you guys remember way back when I started, so I started YouTube, well, my channel's been existing since 2014, but I didn't do anything for a long, for a long time. Really, the end of 2016, 2017, I became more consistent. 2018, I was posting every week. So I used to do A's, B's and C's. That used to be my, my system. But on IMDb, which is where I put all my movies and my lists, I could not figure out the, because I'm like, uh, okay, so obviously an A plus is a 10 out of 10, but an A and A minus can be a nine, but what's an eight? Is an A to B plus? Is this and that? A minus, B plus? I'm like, all right, I just need to switch to the number grades. And then I'm so, like I said, OCD, I started getting specific. I'm like 70, well, that's 70, well, 73, no, on a 72. So now every time I review a movie, the first thing I do when I walk out of the theater is I sit and I ponder and I come home and I usually have a discussion with my wife. I'm like, here's what I liked, here's what I didn't like. And that's when I describe, uh, decide on my number grade. And that's really how I came up with my grading system. Now, does it work for everyone? No. Does it make all the sense in the world? Not necessarily, right? <laughs> because some people are like, why did you rate this one a 77? Listen, my brain is a different species. It is it is odd the way that it works, but that's just the way that it works for me. But I encourage everyone to find your own rating system. Uh, Sean, I like the way Sean does it. He does two different rating systems, but if you think about it, you can't approach it from two different perspectives. So I love what he does. 3C. Uh, his rating system, 3C. The three Cs. And I, I casual, critic, and, and cinephile, I think that is a great way to do it. Jeremy Johns, obviously. So... Come up with your own rating system, but when you go back to Letterbox, you will have to figure out what does this mean? What does this mean? Is this a 7, a 6, a 5, a 4? But I always find it interesting when people have different systems. Uh, Angel in the, ch in the uh, super chat, I miss your tier videos. Bring them back. I'm actually planning. My next tier video is coming soon. I will be doing uh, another recap of January, but I would like to bring those back because those are super fun, right? They were very trendy in July. And I did a lot in July, and then that kind of fell off, but I, I love doing those so much, and I love utilizing a, a Wirecast and OBS to do that while I'm working, which is super cool. That's actually how I have it on screen, but uh, yeah, I would love to do that. So thank you for requesting that, because, you know, some people don't love the tier list. That's okay. I try to do different things to appease both, the list and the tier list, whatnot. Um, well, and it's, and it's another thing to kind of distinguish myself, because I don't want to, like copy other people and do the same list as they do. So it's like, if I do a tier list, it's a little bit different. You know, it, it's kind of just like, I, I want to be my own person, but at the same time, I do want to do like, you know, the best of the year and all of those things, which is why I did so many lists at the end of December. Um, but man, those lists at the end of December were so fun. I love the end of the year. And, and this time we got an end of the decade and that was so much fun. So, oh, my heart was full when I was making those videos, man. Uh, watch my number two favorite uh, favorite film of the 2010s, Wolf Children. Uh, Magnitude, by the way, is a very big supporter. I, I appreciate all of your support, but I, I believe I saw your comment on my, um, on my best of the decade, and I actually put that on my watch list on Letterboxd. I haven't heard a lot about Wolf Children, so, but when everyone was talking about it, and I believe it was in the replies to your comments, everyone was saying, Wolf Children, yes, 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 Wolf Children. So apparently people love this movie, and then I looked at the ratings, and yeah, people love this film, so I definitely need to get to it. But thank you for, for the re request, absolutely. Um, how do you deal with burnout? This is a great, uh, a great question by, and I'm so sorry I've not been saying names in, in the chat as much as I should have. I should acknowledge you guys. Your t-shirt is dope, Austin. Cat dog. Yeah, it's like it because I live in Kentucky and it's the Jurassic, it's the Jurassic Park thing. Thank you. Uh, but how do you deal with with burnout? By uh, Abhishek, I believe. Um, it's tough, especially when you watch so many things on on Fridays. Sometimes I'm watching two to three shows at a time, and and you know, not fortunate enough to live or fortunate. Oh gosh, not. Um, I just I live in Kentucky because right now, honestly, I'll be frank with you guys. You're watching this video. I live here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep living here for, for just a little bit longer because my wife is going to school. She's going to, um, she's going to grad school, and it's important to her that she gets that done. It's important to me that she gets that done. I want to support her as much as she supported me because she's actually the reason I made this YouTube channel. She's the full reason. When we started dating, she's like, make this channel. I know you want to do it. That's when I was doing Vine. Those were my Vine days, and I had way more followers on there than I'll, than I'll have on YouTube in quite a while. But she was like, do it. You need something to fall back on. And I'm like, okay. So 
I did it because of her. So now I feel like I, I'm going to support her. We're going to stay in Kentucky. Sorry I went on the tirade just now, but just so you guys know where I'm at and why I'm here. Um, but nothing horribly about Kentucky, man. I love Kentucky, and, and I love all of the people here that I live with. So it, it's great. People just aren't as passionate about it. That's why I have you guys, because we're not as passionate here. I am. But in general, we're not as passionate about movies here as you all are and as the people in this space and as the community. And pretty much everyone in this chat room right now are about movies. So that's, you know, it's a bummer when you don't have them here, but I have them here. So I'm absolutely okay with that. Uh, thoughts on season two of Sex Education? Can't wait to watch it, man. My review will be coming out this Friday. Be sure to check that out. Love season one. Thought it was really, really great. Can you see some Tenacious D? <laughs> That is awesome. Um, I cannot because of copyright, but I do love me some Tenacious D. Let's go. Um, okay, Samuel Prater. Be honest. <laughs> and Samuel Prater, who sent me the, the package, is moving back to Kentucky. So, I mean, you give me a little reason as I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, it'll be nice. He's moving like 15 minutes down the road, so it's going to be fun. Um, make a film. Gosh, I want to make a film, Girl Warrior. I want to make a film really bad. Give me the money and I'll make it. No, I uh, I still need to invest in a camera and a couple of other, other things to improve my YouTube channel, but I do want to make a short film maybe this year, or at least get the script done. Uh, thoughts on the year ahead for Netflix from uh, Gabriel Hubby. Uh, Lock and Key looks great. Lock and Key does look great. And let me tell you, I saw that trailer after I did my most anticipated Netflix shows, and that trailer was fantastic, man. That got me super duper excited. Um... <laughs> well, uh, do lover, what's the deal with that copyright issue? You can't sing a song now. Unfortunately, I can't because they'll probably, I don't know, they'll probably register it. Recently, I got the video taken down because of that, so I don't want to get into that. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 difficult. YouTube is a tough space, man. Favorite more war movie, uh, Saving Private Ryan. Although I need to see 1917 again. Spoilers. Uh, hey, Austin, are you going to watch the Loud House TV show or not? You know, I'm debating it. I'm not for sure. Uh, Basil can. Basil can. Uh, and by the way, favorite war movie was Son Boy. I need to read y'all's names. I'm slacking, even though you can see it. Can you see it? Nope, still can't see him on the screen. I need to pull that back up. Uh, actually, let's go back over to Patreon real quick because I promised them I would get to these questions because we got some good ones. We got some dandies. Um, out of the Oscar winners from uh, 2010 to 2019... Uh, which category would you say was the best of the decade? It's a great question from Jackson. Um, man, I would say the best, best picture is probably Spotlight. I would say the best, best actor is Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln or J.K. Simmons for, this was supporting actor, but it still counts as actor, uh, for Whiplash. And I would say the best actress is Natalie Portman. Yeah, I, I think that's what I would decide on. Uh, Carl the First, congratulates on 50K. Thank you so much. Uh, what are your thoughts on anime movies uh, that never get any recognition at the Oscars? It is kind of a shame. There are some beautiful animated films. Uh, by the way, Your Name is one of my favorite movies of the decade. It is phenomenal. I know I didn't mention it, but it's easily my top 35, top 40 of the decade. And I think it's up there in my all-time list as well. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. Uh, which actor would you want to play yourself? <laughs> um... Gosh, Matt Damon, Leo, let's go. Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon. Oh, you know what? We could do Mark Wahlberg because sometimes Mark Wahlberg just shows up in a movie. I'm like, hey, hey, everybody, it's Mark Wahlberg. It doesn't really look like me, but it's okay. Oh, gosh, sorry. Um, <laughs> next up, uh, what is your least favorite movie of all time? I already talked about it. No, I didn't. It's Catwoman. I'm sorry. Catwoman is probably my least favorite movie of all time. I hate that film. Uh, will you ever watch Cats again? Hang on. Give me a second. Let me pull myself back up here. No. All right, let's go back to the chat now. Uh, I'll add more later, but this is the opportunity to answer the one guy that asks you every few days about reviewing Samurai Jack. Yes, I had someone on my channel, uh, someone on my channel who continued to ask me to review Samurai Jack. And I told him maybe I would acknowledge it during a live stream if I finished the show, if I finished this last season. Things have just gotten so busy, I just haven't been able to finish it. But what I have seen so far, I have absolutely loved. And the show as a whole, I think, is fantastic. Is easily one of the best uh, Cartoon Network shows of all time. So I love Samurai Jack, but I will, once I finish it, I will acknowledge it. Um, let's see. Serious questions. 
from James. Thank you, James. Appreciate you. Um, will you be up to date on Star Wars Clone Wars? Yes, I will. I'm, I'm binging through the important episodes right now. Are you going to do any more reviews of the Apple Plus? I've already talked about it, but possibly. Will you be covering any content on the incoming HBO Max? Yes, I will. Especially Green Lantern. Are you planning on covering more anime series movies this year? Yes, I will. The um, More of the popular ones on Netflix, but I definitely want to, at least more than last year. Um, does your wife or friend help you with your YouTube channel process, or do you 100% do everything on your own? Well, I can't say my wife doesn't help me. My wife is the reason why I'm here right now. She is so wonderful, and I can't say my friends don't help me, because my friends give me opportunities and... and they give me ideas all the time. When it comes to editing and all those things and exporting, I do all of that myself. But absolutely, spiritually and, and, and mentally and emotionally, I have all of the help in the world. And, and you guys as well. I mean, <laughs> you make me want to post videos, which is awesome. When did you upload your first YouTube video? Well, technically, I think I did a, a Vine compilation in like 2014, 2015. I don't even know if that's still up. And I did some skits and a couple of things. But my first real movie-related video was a Captain America Civil War trailer reaction. And I believe my first review was Deadpool. But my first actual, like, reviewing on a, on a monthly, weekly basis was uh, in 2017, around when I did Logan. It was in the January. I actually think Split may have been the first one of that year, but those were really when I started full-time, uh, quote-unquote, on my channel. So, some great questions there, man. Uh, go to Xamary with some great questions. What are some of your favorite all-time favorite trailers? Yeah, um, man, Mad Max Fury Road. This year, Uncut Gems, 1917. Uh, Avengers Infinity War. Avengers Age of Ultron. Star Wars The Force Awakens, The Dark Knight Rises. Obviously, I'm a big blockbuster guy, uh, but some wonderful, wonderful trailers there. And any A24 trailer usually gets me super excited. Do you play video games? If so, how often? I've acknowledged this a little bit already, but uh, not, as, not as often as a lot of people, just because I'm watching so many movies, but I love playing me some Nintendo every now and then. And I used to be the world's biggest Call of Duty guy. Oh my gosh, I loved, love, love, love uh, Call of Duty. Uh, what is your biggest movie pet peeve? Within a film, my biggest pet peeve is most likely, oh gosh, most likely uh, over-the-shoulder shots. It's probably my biggest pet peeve. But there are a lot of different mo movie tropes that get on my nerves, and I saw pretty much every one of them in Like a Boss. <laughs> so shout out to Like a Boss for, for making me acknowledge all of the movie tropes that I did not like. I do want to go back over real quick, because we do have a super chat, which I want to get to. Um, so this super chat is from Dan6Heat. I like that name. Hey, Austin, just saw 1917 last night, and I was in awe of the movie. One of my faves now. Uh, don't really have a question, but keep up the good work, man. Thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you so much for that super chat. And thank you for once again bringing up 1917, because I love that film, man. I love 1917. I think it is truly fantastic. And there are just so many different things about that film that, that awe me. I need to see it again to be 100% sure it's my number one favorite film of the year. Uh, but a great super chat and one that makes me oh so happy, man. This is awesome. Um, it's awesome that it keeps getting acknowledged in the chat room, because... I knew people would love it, and now I see the letterbox score. It's like a 4.2 or 4.1. I'm seeing all these IMDb scores. People are like, yeah, I love this movie. Uh, the, the cinema score was interesting. At A minus. Okay, I get it. There are slow moments. So I get like your casual audience, but like film fans, man, oh, love the movie. Uh, I. Uh, in the normal chat, Hooplehead USA says, quick cut action. I'm with you. I'm with you. I used to not be that way. But, um, Nowadays, we get this quick cut action that kind of copies the Bourne franchise, but not in a good way. I take you back to a movie like Taken 3 when there's, you know, 20 camera angles of, of Liam Neeson jumping over a fence, and I'm just like, could we not make this better? And I know we're probably spoiled now from something like a John Wick. John Wick tends to spoil people. But, yeah, quick cut action, when it doesn't work like a Bourne, yeah, it's a big bummer. Um, yeah, 1917 is phenomenal. Uh, uh, Geo Wiz, do you have a Blu-ray collection? Uh, Tech Unknown. I did talk about it just a tad bit at the beginning. I do and I don't. I have, I have a moderate one just because I only buy Blu-rays just because my, my wife and I are kind of just like... <laughs> we're kind of like... Um, <laughs> sure. My wife and I are... Um, 
we're tight, not tight, but we're, we're like, we, we're young. We, we got to save some money. I'm trying to get a camera. So I don't buy as many Blu-rays, but I do want to go back and do a growing up DVD collection because that's just sitting in my mom's uh, garage. And I'm just like, I got to do something with these. So might be a special video coming soon. Samuel Prater, in the super chat. Can I have that shirt? Uh, would you consider live streaming more often from Ranch King? Uh, yes, I would. I would love to do it. If you guys would show up, I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat. I, I just, um, if you guys want that, let me know in the super chat. If you guys want that, I mean, like this video. What, you know, whatever it comes to, would love to do it. And I hate to, I'm sorry, I'll get, Sam, I'll get to your thing here in just a second. I'm sorry I always say like this video. I'm, I'm sorry I always say hit that thumbs up button. I know it can come across as annoying sometimes, uh, but it, you know, it's part of the reason why I'm at 50K. The more thumbs up on your videos, um, the more likely your videos are to get recognized by people that aren't your subscribers, and the more it actually boosts your channel's recognize. So when I say hit that thumbs up button, I'm not trying to be greedy. I don't want to be needy. I don't want to come across that way. Um, that's kind of why I say it. But it really does help out a video like this. So I, tr I truly appreciate all of you who always like my videos, and you're first, and you're like sending me questions when I first post because the notification bell, man, that... That means the world to me, man. I, it's, it's awesome. So Samuel Prater said, can I have that shirt? So Sam's favorite movie is Jurassic Park. Sam, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm hunting. Hang on. I, I don't want to give away my gift. I'm hunting for one like it. They didn't have a, a, a large, so... Dang it, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, <laughs> um, some great things in the in, in the chat that I do want to acknowledge, though. Uh, Angel, once again, do you think Black Widow will make a billion dollars? <sighs> No, no, I don't. I think it'll get close. I'd say nine nine fifty max. But what do I know? Movies make a billion dollars all the time. It's just like I never thought that would make a billion dollars. But that's a great question, man. That's a great question. So uh, yeah, I, possibly. But I would say nine nine fifty max. Uh, Dorito Chip Gamer, Austin, do you like Antonio Brown? <laughs> Here's what I'll say. I'm a Steelers fan, obviously. Uh, Antonio Brown, for what he served us, was great. But when we traded away and got draft picks out of him, and then Oakland and New England got nothing out of him, I'm not going to lie. I'm just like, yeah, sweet. Because the guy's just kind of cuckoo. <laughs> so there you go. Um, let's see what else is going on in the chat room. Um, let's see. Have you ever seen Boogie Nights? Boogie Nights is a really great movie, man. It is a really great movie. Um, let's see. I'm looking for some other good questions. Have you seen uh, Napoleon Dynamite? Yes. It is a film that I have a hard time saying it's a fantastic movie, but I'm not going to lie. It is super entertaining and really funny. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but it is really, really funny. Thoughts on the Hobbit movies? I like them not as much as Lord of the Rings. Uh, I'm much more of a Lord of the Rings guy, obviously, but the, Hob the Hobbit movies are okay. Okay. They, I think they get worse as they go. Uh, favorite horror movie? <sighs> Gosh, I am slowly coming around on Hereditary. I really am. I'm slowly coming around on Hereditary. I think it is, um, hang on, I'm, I'm getting somebody out of the chat real quick because they just getting on my nerves, you know, let's see, hang on, okay, there we go, um, yeah, let's see, there we go, bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, let's see, um, are you planning on doing any more tier list videos? Yes, absolutely. Have you seen Succession? Um, I encourage you to check out my favorite movies, or my favorite TV shows of last year, but Succession Season 2, yeah. I love this show, and I didn't actually do uh, a, um, I didn't actually do a um, review of Succession on this channel, which is unfortunate because it was one of my favorite shows of last year. But if you guys have the chance and you have HBO, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, the Shining, yes, I love The Shining. Favorite Stephen King movies? Um, that's. Hmm. I can't, I was going to do a top five Stephen King movies earlier on in the year. I just didn't really see the want for it, like the want that there is occasionally for these directors and, and actors lists. Um, but gosh, it's hard to do my favorite movie. Probably Shawshank Redemption. That's probably my favorite Stephen King. It's kind of a cheat, but uh, I, I love the it's, I love your uh, miseries, all, those, all of those things. It's a tough thing to come up with off the top of your head. Do you think Disney Plus is better or Netflix? I still think Netflix is better, but Disney Plus is young. It's a baby. Why did I do that? Disney Plus is young, right? There will be a time where it will be more even 
there will be a time where it will be more fair to compare because we'll have more original content. Um, but as of now, I will still say Netflix, but I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I go back and watch all these things on Dis Disney Plus all the time. Uh, Austin, when will you watch Fleabag or Mr. Robot? Currently watching Fleabag, Mr. Robot. I need to catch up on. I can't say when, but uh, Fleabag is really great so far. Oh, th here's something by Abhishek again. Uh, Hawkeye series getting canceled. Yes. Wow. Well, it didn't get canceled. It got pushed. It got pushed. Um, but I think that is honestly because of Haley Steinfeld's schedule with Apple Plus right now. I think that's what it is. Um, I'm losing my voice. I've been talking so long. But I really do. I think that is, is Haley Steinfeld, the fact that she is working so hard over there and she's caught up in a lot of different projects. And I think they wanted her for Kate Bishop, and now I don't think they can get her for Kate Bishop unless they push the show. I think they're pushing it for her, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually a new Kate Bishop eventually, um, just because her schedule is so crazy. Uh, what is your most anticipated movie 2021? Oh, it's so hard to do it this far out. Oh, man, that's a toughie. I'll have to get back with you on, on that, but that's a great question, Charlie. Um, Austin, have you ever seen Ozark? Yes. Love me some Ozark. Season 3 this year. Stay tuned. Here's some brandless water. Yeah. Mm. Sponsored by Brandless Water. So, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, Austin, have you seen Lords of Chaos this year? No, I have not. Austin, do you like Le'Veon Bell? Yes, I do like Le'Veon Bell. I, I don't think that. He just wanted paid, man. He just wanted money. He's not... Um, not the not the CTE like Antonio Brown. Not the didn't get hit in the head too many times. So I like Le'Veon Bell actually. Uh, I didn't think he was that good this year, so we weren't missing much. But Steelers did try to f trade for him, by the way, which I thought was interesting. Uh, am I the only one who actually enjoys the mist? Hey, listen, that's okay. That's okay. Listen, just because I hate a movie doesn't mean you have to like a movie. That's fine. But man, I just I don't like that movie. Uh, what is your favorite anime? One Punch Man. One Punch Man season one. Season two, I didn't do a review. Took me a while, but yeah, I like season two. I need to see it again, though. Uh, have you seen the Antlers trailer? Yes. And that movie looks great. I cannot wait for that film, actually. Uh, don't know why I didn't include on, on my most anticipated movies. Did I? I can't remember. I should have. Uh, favorite A24 movie? I tried to answer that earlier, Foster. Man, that's a... It's tough. It's tough. But I, I just... I can't, I can't quite answer it right now. But be on the lookout. I may do an A24 tier list. That may be my way to get back in a tier list. Have you seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine? I'm on season four right now. And let me tell you, this show is hilarious. I always rewatch The Office and Parks and Rick. I've watched The Office a thousand times. Uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is going to be one that I go back and rewatch again once I finish. Because Brooklyn Nine-Nine is so, so funny. I love it so much. So yeah, it's a great series. Austin, uh, when is your top 20 movies of all time going to be out? That's a tough question. Oh, yes, Attack on Titan. By the way, to go back to the anime question, I'm scattered. Attack on Titan is a wonderful anime series. Uh, but the top movies, I wanted to do it in January. That was my goal. But guys, I just can't come. Sean, if you're still there, how, are you, how do you do it, man? This is so tough coming up with your favorite films of all time. It's hard because you have to take into account how good of a movie it is, how does nostalgia play in? How does um, how have things changed over the years, over the months, over the weeks, right? And things do change. You, I look back on a movie from 10 years ago, and I feel completely different than I used to feel about it. So, you know, it it's hard to come up with, but I'm going to do it. I want to do it. I want to have my top 30. Um, I have that list of my favorites on Letterboxd right now. So if you go on Letterboxd, you can actually see what my top 30 favorite movies of all time are. I'm just not concrete in those because um, I'm trying to go back and watch a few that might make their way in there. So yeah, still great. Um, me and Zach, is Zach Pope live right now too? Uh, yeah, I'll just go over Zach Pope. I like Zach Pope. He's, good. He's a good guy. So yeah, definitely check him out. Um, he... Um, and Sean's video, I think he said it was coming out in like an hour of his favorite movies. Go over there after this, because uh, I'll definitely be done by that point. And I'll be over there, because I'm, I'm, I'm curious, man. I want to see. I have my notepad out. I'm like, what are Sean's favorite movies of all time? Uh, what do you think about Superbad? Uh, Superbad's hilarious, man. I love it so, so much. It is a funny movie. A lot of people compared, um, compared Booksmart to Superbad, and they didn't realize that uh, Beanie Feldstein was Jonah Hill's uh, sister which I think is so funny. You got the, that connection and then the fact that they're two very s similar movies. So I thought that was really funny. Um, let's see. Um, uh, just uh, anime movie Silent Voice. No, I have not. No, I have not. You married. I am married. I am um, oh, a wonderful woman by the name of Madison who supports me in everything that I do. Uh, and then Sean says, yes, my video is going live in an hour and 20 minutes. So definitely go over there and check that out because 
it's a big it's a big video y'all it's a big video um favorite movies man that and that's how i felt about my favorite movies of the decade just because it's like you put so much work in it and you go back and you rewatch a lot of films um so at the end of the day it, regardless of how long it takes you to edit which i'm sure it took you forever because those those decade lists took me forever it's just a big it's just a big thing when you're talking the best of the best to you personally and it's always a personal thing as well so yeah i definitely encourage you to go check that out uh heard parasite is getting an hbo miniseries yeah that's oof i'll have to see a trailer for that because that makes me a little bit worried uh uh gosh yeah uh abishek again with with the great response austin are you excited uh, for morbius from ranch king yes i am actually uh, more so than i was because i liked that image now we talked about this on film strippers I wasn't super pumped for it before, but that image was like, okay. And now they're saying it might be connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's just a rumor, but I'm like, all right. All right, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Austin, what are your favorite? Uh, award, are you going to do an award show, the Flick Fan Awards? So I've already acknowledged this, but the Flick Fan Awards, I'm debating. I don't know. If there's call for it, if you guys want to see it, definitely let me know. Definitely let me know, but that's a tough thing to do just because I, I want to make it worth it because it's it took me five hours to put that video together last year, and I just want it to be worth it. You know what I mean? So definitely let me know if you want to see that. Um, have you seen Captain Fantastic, one of my favorite all-time films, very underrated, starring Viggo Mortensen, George McKay from 1917? I have not seen Captain Fantastic. I have not. I watched about 20 minutes of it, and then we actually had to leave. I remember exactly when this was, but I need to finish it because what I saw... I really, really enjoyed. And Viggo Mortensen is such a wonderful actor. Uh, Austin, what's your favorite moment in a Tarantino movie? Gosh. It may be when... Um, spoilers for Django Unchained, if you haven't seen Django Unchained. Uh, but it may be when uh, Christoph Waltz takes out Leo in that film. I just... I loved the shock factor of that. And then the blood splatter. Uh, that scene, man... Gosh, man, that is that is filmmaking. No, seriously, I love that so much, man, and it was so much fun to watch. Uh, do the award show, definitely. I'm getting some love from that. Do you think Inception will be related to Tenet? You know, before I saw the trailer, I would have said yes. I absolutely said yes at a point. Uh, Inception and Tenet are two very similar films, what it feels like in tone and in scale. We, we know they both had big budgets. We know they both have stacked casts. We know they both deal with one with the mind, one with time travel. I don't think they are related at this point. I thought they were originally. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a secret, it's a secret se sequel to Inception. Now I don't, I don't believe that. Uh, but they will be very similar in terms of what we enjoyed from, from Inception. I have a feeling we will enjoy it in uh, Tenet. Gosh, I'm so excited for Tenet, guys. Oh, my blood's boiling. Uh, thoughts on The Prestige? You are the best. This is from uh, Seraphim Page and The Shades of Arcalay Balatar. Did I get that right? I think I got that right. Um, thank you so much for the super chat, by the way. Uh, I, we w I will do a couple more super chats. I'm going to do Patreon, and then I'm going to wrap this up shortly because y'all know I I talk too much. I could talk about movies all day, but we'll try. We'll try to make this more of a of a ongoing thing on my channel. The Prestige is a wonderful film, and you all know I love Christopher Nolan. But I went back uh, last year and watched The Prestige. I don't know why I did actually. I think it's just because I wanted to. Um, but Hugh Jackman, one of his best performances. I would say Prisoners is his best, but then 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 Prestige. Uh, Christian Bell was phenomenal. Andy Serkis in that movie is great, and that film grows on me and grows on me every single time I watch it. It is slowly becoming one of my favorite Christopher Nolan films. Uh, so it is a great question, and I love that film. And if you're on Letterboxd, go check that out. Uh, find my review of The Prestige, because I'm pretty sure I did it this, la this past year. Uh, what is your favorite Denis Villeneuve film? Uh, butchered that name. I always butchered that name. That is from Dorito Chip Gamer. Love Doritos and chips and games. Uh, Denis Villeneuve. I mean, I, I put it at number one on my decade list, so I have to, to do it again. It's a rival. And it used to not be a rival. It used to be Blade Runner. And right behind that, Prisoners. Uh, and right behind that, Sicario. And right behind that, Enemy. There it is. There's my list. Those are my favorite. But I love them all. I think they're all nines and tens out of tens. Enemy is probably the one where I'm like, I don't know if this is a fantastic movie or if it's, or if it's just so weird that I really, really love it. Uh, but 
yeah, Denis Villeneuve is my favorite director working right now. So obviously I'm going to have a lot of his movies in my top list. Uh, Syed says, I guess Prestige is my favorite movie of all time. That's a great favorite movie. Uh, any Christopher Nolan or Denis Villeneuve film is a great favorite movie. Uh, Austin, what is your favorite show? I, I'm constantly between Breaking Bad and The Office. Uh, the Office is more rewatchable. Breaking Bad, every time I watch it, I get just invested the same amount as I did the first time. I went back and watched Breaking Bad in preparation for El Camino, uh, and it was it was a great experience, but I'm watching The Office every day, man. It, it, in the background, when I'm eating, when I'm sleeping, uh, whatever, I'm watching The Office, so that's probably the most rewatchable show for me of all time. That and Parks and Rec. What is your favorite David Fincher movie? That's tough, but it's got to be The Social Network. I think The Social Network is a brilliant film, um, but I do love me some Seven. I think Seven is just great, and Fight Club, obviously. Fight Club is going to be awesome, both of those films. Uh, what do you think, Blind King, what do you think about Ari Aster? I think Ari Aster is brilliant. I, I love Hereditary, and I love Midsommar. I think he's underrated in terms of the Academy not taking him serious, uh, and his filmmaking style, it speaks to me. I love Sorry. Uh, <laughs> what is your favorite Disney movie? Oh, that's tough. That is uh, Kevin's Lego Films. Favorite Disney movie? Uh, let's go classic Disney. I'll say The Lion King. Let's go classic Disney. I'll say The Lion King. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one, though, man. I love so many Disney movies. Aladdin. Uh, I like Blue, Beauty and the Beast. Emperor's New Groove. Let's go. We're going to rep that. We're going to rep that llama. And uh, and what else? There was no, Oh, I'm a big... I think the Goofy movie's underrated, so... I like it. wouldn't be my favorite, but I like the Goofy movie. Uh, I hope Ari Aster makes more horror. Yes. Random question. Have you ever considered watching Chinese dramas on Netflix? I have heard great things about The King's Avatar. I know you've watched some Japanese and Koreans one before. Yes. So if one pops up uh, in the near future and I think it warrants a review, I'll absolutely watch one because I've heard some great thing uh, things about both of the ones that you mentioned, actually. Uh, Austin, Guilty Pleasures. <sighs> Is... The Scooby-Doo movie, A Guilty Pleasure? Yes, it is, because I don't think those films are very good. But I kind of grew up with those Scooby-Doo movies. They're ridiculous, but I think they're guilty pleasures. Um, Cat in the Hat's not a good movie, but I watch that because I'm just fascinated with that film. <laughs> I'm just so fascinated with the Mike Myers Cat in the Hat movie. I wish I could put a picture of that on screen. What a weird movie, but it's kind of a guilty pleasure, I guess. Oh my gosh, uh, do you see? Uh, do you see the Disaster Artist? I love the Disaster Artist. I think it's a wonderful movie, one of my favorite of that year. By saying Sean Chandler talks about, congratulations, you're killing it. Here's to 100k uh, by 2021 with the super chat, Sean. Thank you. You didn't have to do that, man. Uh, thank you so much, um, man. I really, really hope. Really, really hope I can get to 100K. Maybe not by 2021. I told my wife uh, last year, I'm like, sorry, I keep scratching my nose. I'm itching. Uh, I told my wife last year, I just don't think I can get to 50K in the next year. And it wasn't the next year, but I did. I, ma I made it by January. So who knows? Who knows what happens? My goal is 75K by the end of the year. That's my goal. But hey, man, I, if I could join that 100K club, that'd be awesome. Uh, but you, you three C both y'all over hundred K you work your butt off. You deserve to be where you are. I would love to be up there with you, man. But those are the goals. Them's the goals that was, that's, that's, uh, I'll try my best to get there. I'm, I'm going to try some new things this year. Try some things that maybe are unconventional, <laughs> some things that, um, that I hope can bring more attention to my channel. Uh, but I, I do this because I want to do this. Uh, I want to do movie reviews. Like, that's my goal. Like, everybody wants to do movie reviews, but I want to build up so they'll just watch the, the normal average reviews. But, hey, I appreciate it. Big time. I would love that. That's kind of that's kind of my goal. Um, let's see. Back to the chat. Y'all putting some great... Um, what is your favorite Dwight Schrute moments? <laughs> um, I love when Jim comes in dressed as Dwight. I think that's that might be my favorite one. Um, and just anytime he says facts... And obviously, I got the Bears beats Battlestar Galactica shirt, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I there are so many great moments from Dwight Schrute. And then Sean says, uh, "YouTube can be mysterious, absolutely, with things that are changing." But 75k seems like an easy target. 100k, what surprised me? Thank you, man. I I would love to get there, man. I think it would be super cool. Um, it used to seem like a like when I started YouTube, I'm like, oh, I can do this. I believe, I believe I can do this. I came from Vine. I had 150,000 followers on Vine, and I'm like, oh, I can do this on YouTube too. Um, and it's tough. It's a lot tougher than that was. I'll tell you. YouTube's tough. And things are changing. 
and the world is is different than it used to be. Um, but that's kind of the goal, right? That's kind of the goal that we, we want to uh, we want to adapt with YouTube. So I hope I can get there. I pray I can get there. My wife sitting back going, "You can do it." She's so supportive; it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I certainly hope so. Uh, would you ever con- collab with Sean? Talks about. Pff, We've collabed. We got one on my channel right now. We did um, we did MCU. We talked about the MCU, and uh, in the future, we have talked about it. Sean is, uh, is um, doing. I don't want to say yet. He's doing some things on his channel that I may be uh, pop up once or twice on. So uh, yeah, we've we've been trying to collab for a long time, man. It's just YouTube. You stay so busy, and things get in the way, and there's a lot of videos to post and editing. I think that's the biggest thing. If you're asking what my biggest time consumer is on YouTube, it's editing. You know, we, we, we jot our thoughts down, we get, and I'm sure it's the same way for Sean and all of these guys, but we get our thoughts together and then we shoot the shoot the video, and maybe that takes 15, 20 minutes. you got to cut out some things. I mess up, I sneeze, you know? <laughs> um, but then you sit and you edit for an hour. Or if the video is massive, you edit for three hours. That's the big time consumer. And at the end of the day, you're exhausted. You're just tired. You want to go to bed. You're like, I can't, I can't make a video tomorrow because this took so long, but it's fun. I love editing. I love making these videos. So yeah, that's probably the biggest time consumer. If that's the question that you're asking, um, going to hit on a few more questions. going to try to end this here in the next five or six minutes. If you guys have any, any more major questions with me, uh, for me, then, then definitely let me know. I'm starting to jumble my words because we've been doing this for so long, but I love doing this, man. It's super fun. Uh, let's see. I do want to go back really quick before I hit the chat. I want to go back to these Patreon questions, uh, and hit these last couple. So we did trailers. Um, we did, have you ever worked in retail? Here's a question. Oh man. Yes. I worked at Walmart for a while as like a summer job. Um, yeah, Walmart, Walmart is, it wasn't fun. This isn't a diss against what retail is not fun, but you know what? Growing up, I feel like this is something that you have. I mean, I was doing it summer money, couple summers. If Sam's still in the chat, he can attest because we both work there together. Um, retail is tough, but for people who that is their day job, man, I respect you. Oh my goodness, do I respect you like crazy? That is a tough job to work in. And for those who say it's easy, you're wrong. You're wrong. Retail is tough. Is very tough. So, um, to everyone who works in retail, man, uh, my goodness, I hope you have the most blessed life, the most blessed lives possible. That that is, whew, that's a tough gig. Um, and then, yeah, a couple more questions that I think I've already answered the majority of these questions. So I do want to go back to the chat, um, but first I do want to give one more quick plug to Film Strippers, which is our, um, which is our podcast, my podcast with three C. And we, we do a lot of great stuff on there. And then I do want to um, just acknowledge, I, I want to thank you guys one more time for those who didn't catch the beginning of this video um, for helping me, you know, get to where I am on YouTube. It's just a number, and I say this all the time, it's just a number, but it does mean the absolute world to me. Uh, and it means the world that you guys have been in the live chat for all of this time, and you're asking me questions, and you're doing you're doing some pretty cool things. Uh, big respect for this cat, Samuel. Um, you're doing some pretty cool things, so I, I do want to answer couple more questions. So, who's your favorite movie reviewer? Mm. There's a lot. Obviously, I love the peers. I love my peers. Um, I'll, I'll keep it to those that I don't necessarily associate with because they're just too big for me, let's be honest. Uh, Jeremy Johns, Chris Stockman, Campia, uh, Schmoes. Schmoes been in the game for a long time. Obviously, I, I, I pop up on the Schmoes no feed every now and then. Uh, doing their podcast with Ryan Snelling, who's my boy, uh, and and so if you guys follow the Schmoes No podcast feed, you know I've been associated with the Schmoes a little bit. Uh, Dan Merle, yeah, Dan Merle, I think is my favorite movie critic. Dan Merle's, I just love the way he approaches film, and I don't always agree with Dan Merle. Dan Merle is occasionally someone who I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I agree with that, but the way that he tackles going uh, uh, reviewing movies and his his thoughts just always. Make me look at them a different way, right? So, yeah, I love Dan Merle over on Screen Junkies. If you guys want to go check that out, uh, check out their channel. It's a free plug for Screen Junkies. I got Epic Voice Guy to help me out with the Flick Fan Awards last year, so I've done a little bit with them. But, um, but yeah, man, 
yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, Zach Pope has entered the chat. I talked about Zach Pope. Yeah, Zach Pope's here. I talked about Zach Pope a little earlier, guys. Once again, uh, all of the guys that have been in the chat today, go check out Zach. Go check out Ryan. Go check out Sean. Go check out three uh, three C Films. These are all guys who are just doing it and doing it right, man. Um, so Zach, I appreciate you, man. It's it's awesome that you're in the chat, and uh, and just exchange with them as much as you exchange with me. I know it would mean a lot to them, and it would mean a lot to me, honestly, to build this community up even more. So, yeah, great work over there, Zach, and, and you're killing it, dude. You're absolutely killing it. And they said you were live at the same time as I was live, and I didn't know you were going to be live. So go check out Zach Pope's live stream uh, after we get done with this for sure, if you didn't. And if you're just coming over from Zach's live stream, what's up? Let, let's go. Let's talk about movies. Um the just to give you an update on some videos i do want to talk a little bit about the critics choice award war, awards i may do that we're going to talk oscar nominations and, and this week do little which i may see an early screening of if cincinnati grants me that wish and um what's the other one bad boys for life so those are just some updates on on some movies coming out this year how many movies do you watch a day well last year my stats said i watched seven movies a week which would be one movie a day um, no, I'm sorry. It was like 7.3 or something like that. Cause I got up to 400 and something. Uh, my goal this year is 500 movies total. My goal this year is 250, 2020 movies. So we'll see. I don't know. It, occasionally I do some stuff that may prevent me from doing that. Cause I watch a lot of te television, but you know, uh, I came here from Zach's let's go, <laughs> let's go. And like I said, when I'm done, go back over to Zach's channel. I watched inception and wasn't a huge fan. Wow. Okay. So inception is one of my favorite movies of all time. Jake, uh, and not to call you out, it's not for everyone. I think I watched it with my aunt, and my aunt did not love it. I watched it with my whole family, but my aunt did not love that movie. So there are some people that just don't like Inception, which is absolutely fine. It, it is a very uh, convoluted film, but in a good way, and it's one that you have to watch multiple times to understand. So if you watched it, you didn't love it, go watch it again. Um, it is a movie, I think, that warrants a second watch, even if you didn't love it. Um, and hello, chat, and Austin. Hello. Uh, hey, Austin, did you see Bates Motel or Animal Kingdom? I've watched a little bit of Bates Motel with my wife, who loves that show, and I've liked it. Um, uh, <laughs> just wait until you have kids, and your number numbers will drop, Gabriel. Yeah, I know. We don't know when that will happen, but when we have kids, things will get more busy. For sure, for sure. Uh, <laughs> it's a great point, though. Uh, Hector Gonzalez, you're honestly a bit of a character, but that's what makes you, uh, uh, you and I really admire that much love. Thank you so much, Hector. Yes, I am a character. It's ridiculous. Um, what I used to do with my videos, which is, which was more comedy based stuff. I was much more sporadic than I am now. I used to do a lot of crazy random things. Maybe I'll have to put one on my community page one of these days. Um, and if you came over from Vine, obviously you know that. But yes, I have calmed a lot. Uh, how do you manage watching so many movies and TV shows every day? This is from Rahul. Uh, keep making regular videos and writing reviews. Uh, hats off to you, Austin. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's difficult. I don't stop. <laughs> I go into the kitchen to get a snack and I come back and I don't pause the show when I'm binging a show on Friday mornings. Uh, but, you know, where I'm at, the lack of preview screenings... Kentucky, the closest place normally is Nashville, so driving four hours, it's just not worth my time, it's not worth our money. Uh, occasionally Cincinnati, that's where I'm hoping to watch Doolittle. I hope I can watch Doolittle this week. Um, but it's tough, so I do it because I kind of have to do it at this point. Uh, but once again, once my wife gets through school, I would love to be in an area where I can watch more early screenings, which would make my Fridays a lot easier. Um... Yeah, and, and I thought you would love it because I love Dark Knight and Interstellar. Yeah, listen, Interstellar. You can't go wrong with Interstellar or The Dark Knight, which obviously is one of my favorite movies of all time. Guys, I, um, I'm going to wrap this up in about two minutes. So any more major Super Chats, questions you want me to answer for sure, I definitely want to get to, so leave those. Um, I did notice my finger is bleeding, my, my, my pinky finger, so I can... Is, is it weird if I show you that it's bleeding if you don't like blood? So I'm, I am doing a full Leonardo DiCaprio right now. <laughs> I am Leo and Django Unchained. I am bleeding and I'm still going, baby. Let's go. Two more minutes. 
Come on, live stream. We're doing this on YouTube. So any more major questions, I will get to those before we go. Thoughts on Bad Boys 1 and 2? Charlie, I am going back through on Letterboxd if you want to see my full thoughts on those movies. Uh, I did Bad Boys 1 this last week, if you follow me on Letterboxd, and Bad Boys 2 this next week in preparation for Thursday or Friday, whenever I watch that movie, probably Thursday. So um, I like them. I don't love them. I think they're a bit messy, uh, but I think they're very fun. They're very, they're when Michael Bay was in his prime. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I like the Bad Boys franchise, but I don't love it. I think it's okay. I think the movies are okay. They're just, you know, a bit of their time. Uh, did I miss the unboxing? Yes, but you can go back to the unboxing. It is, it is um, something that is setting up a future video for my channel. Oh, gosh, guys. I'm going to... Oh, gosh. Yeah. Here, I'll... Yeah, I don't even want to spoil it. If you missed the unboxing, you can go back and check it out. But, oh, man, it's going to be crazy. Are you a voice actor? I've always wanted to be a voice actor. I've done some voice acting things for college. We had a show where I voiced a character, and I did multiple different voices. Sometimes I'll do Jack Sparrow, and sometimes I'll do Joker. Hey, everybody. Sometimes I'll do Mike Wahlberg. <laughs> so stupid. Sorry. Let me know if you want a video like that. I don't know. I'll do something like that. Um, it's, uh, do more voices. Uh, Django Unchained. Django Unchained, baby! That's a good chat from Syed. Uh, favorite moment in a David Fincher film? I think it's when Garfield and or Andrew Garfield comes over and smashes his keyboard in the social network. It screams out, Mark. I love that. It gives me chills every time I think about it. Um... Man, we're, we're winding down here. We're winding down. Austin, have you considered doing a show where you and other YouTubers pitch certain types of films? Oh, that's a really great idea. I did something similar with... I can't, was it Zach Pope? Zach, was it... Let me know. Did we, did we, pitch, did we pitch on your channel? It was, a, it was a little show you all did. I can't remember, but that was really fun. I had a ton of fun doing that, and I would love to do it again. Uh, <laughs> actually, I love your impressions. I'm so sorry for that. Uh, would you, oh, not answering that question. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Austin, have you considered doing a show where you and other YouTubers pitch certain types of films? That, yeah, that's the one that I just answered. Just read that again. Best impersonator ever. Oh my goodness. Uh, Alex Rivers. Yes. Yes. I, Alex Rivers is a big supporter of mine. I appreciate you. Um, guys, I think that's it. I think that's it. We've been going for, how long have we been going? An hour and a half now. Oh my goodness. My face is red. My body is cold. And I got the sweats. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to end this stream. Um, I do want to thank you guys one more time. My finger is still bleeding. I don't want to pass out. I don't like blood nor needles. I want to thank you guys for joining me. If you want to do this more often, please let me know. Like I said, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, let me know. And it really does. It helps this video. It helps all of my videos. So... Man, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for 50K. Thank you for, for the questions. Thank you for uh, all of your responses. I'm reading the live chat right now. Uh, <laughs> you've, uh, yeah, you guys are just awesome. Truly appreciate it. And I'll be back very soon, possibly tonight for the Critics' Choice Awards. And if not, then I'll be back very soon for, uh, with another video. So you guys are the best, and I'll see you later.